there are a lot of good reasons why you don't just go around messing with ancient artifacts and machines and shit. Haven't you seen literally every Tomb Raiding movie ever? Hell, this is the crap that made the Indiana Jones movies famous, and Bowser just does it for no other reason than it's there. Sure, he thought that spinning this random propeller in the middle of nowhere could have got him to the other side of the river, but as we've seen in other games, he has the power to swim and walk underwater, so why again? Oh, whatever, the Dark Tower awakens and then immediately steps on Bowser because of course it does. Conduct the Adrenaline minigame again and Bowser's Inside Story's second kaiju fight begins. And just to spoil this, there are actually no persons in the Tower of Yik, meaning that someone in a long forgotten time built a self-aware giant robot capable of fisticuffs in the middle of the Mushroom Kingdom. And there has been no problem with it ever. Maybe it was built before the time of Princess Peach and the Mushroom Kings, but then how is it functioning now if it's been underground for a century? Well, at least we have Bowser to deal with it now. This is the point where Alpha Dream shows its commitment to making these kaiju fights work. It's not simply the punch and fire bath that Bowser's castle was. Now there's a gimmick. The kaiju fight is happening on an island with water surrounding it. Bowser has to punch the Tower of Yek off the island to incapacitate it for a couple turns and find the enemy's weak point. The tower has to do the same thing, and it's definitely not a slouch. While having no one inside the tower, it manages to have an army of repair drones. They're easily dealt with due to the giant fire breath. Then the tower has some bombs, which are harder to deal with, mostly because you have to play tennis with it, and the tower to avoid that attack. It's not obvious until the first or second time you see this. Then there's the Fly Guy Armada that it somehow houses despite spending a hundred years in the dirt. They fly into Bowser hauling mushrooms or bombs and you have to launch fire at the army in order to make it go away. It's a great mechanic since spamming the fireballs too much forces them to become tiny and worthless, so aiming into the other screen is a vital part of this. Plus, if the tower can nail Bowser with any attack, then it can throw him a huge distance, meaning that falling into the water and into a horrible spot is an actual possibility. Make sure to grab some mushrooms early because it's a decent chance you can do that. However, doing the same to the tower is super satisfying since Bowser just lays into the bastard, punching him in the face repeatedly and watching it crack under the onslaught. There's a reason why Bowser's sections being power fantasies ultimately make this game what it is. Everything isn't a pushover, yet his immense power is seen all the time. So you get the fun of the fantasy without losing the fun of the difficulty curve. It's just all so lovely, and now that the Tower of Yik is defeated, Bowser can conquer it. Because Bowser!